Hey, this is Butch Bradley with the Land of Giants. I love this project. I get to hang out with everybody I want to meet and talk to. This week, you're going to get an inside look at the world of DJ Ashba. He's got Ashba Media. Uh, if you don't know who he is, you're about to get an inside look because he was the lead guitarist of Guns N' Roses. He was with 6AM, and he's also on his new project called Pyromantic. It's like a mixture of rock and roll and EDM. It's killer. Check this out. How did you jump from piano? And from what I've read about you before, like, and I'm blessed to have your friendship and know you, but not really. I'm like going through it. I'm like, God, there's so many layers to you. You played Beethoven as a child? Yeah. You were like five. Yeah, yeah. You were five. and you That was were like, my first recital, Ode to Joy. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. All right, side weird note. Do you believe in reincarnation? Do you think Beethoven was like, I got you? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Wouldn't it be but great if you I were think Beethoven once we're gone, back? we're gone. But oh. it would be cool if we come back. That'd be cool. But I don't know. I mean, you know, everybody experiences deja vu. So you kind of do got to wonder. There's, and, you know, maybe there is there's something, something to that. There. Yeah, there's something from, there. From the jump, from piano to guitar. Yeah. What was That is like an incredible thing. Yeah, and what happened there is my mom kind of, you know, she started making me take piano lessons or she would teach me and then I had a, also another teacher. And it became something where originally it was like to keep me preoccupied to where it felt like a job. And I was like, I'm not having fun playing piano anymore. Right. So guitar was something, you know, when I first heard Eddie Van Halen play the guitar and Randy Rhodes, I was like, wow, it just touched my soul. and. I detasseled corn for a whole summer. <laughs> out, you're, you know, you're, six six in the morning. You know what's funny? I don't even. I've never heard that word before. Oh really? Detasseled. Yeah, that's what so, it means. Yeah, that's what you, it's called. Yeah, you ride this machine <laughs> through the cornfield and you take the tassels out the top. Oh, you know, and, uh, and your hands are all cut up. It's freezing cold. The shit's smacking <clears> you in the face. And but I did that for a whole summer to buy my first guitar out of the Sears catalog for like a hundred and. 80 bucks. I mean, it was like, how you know, killer. Yeah. This is, it's so funny. The fields of America have like created like <laughs> Johnny Cash and you. Yeah. Like, you're like, you know, there's got to be a better life. There's just got to be. There's got to yeah, be. Yeah. You know, wow, mom, wow. maybe the piano's not so bad. <laughs> yeah. If I, can I get off this machine? <laughs> yeah. I'm but, that's how, but that's how determined I was to, you know, to create music and the love I had for music. It, it, it you know, I don't know. It touched my soul. And, you know, like I said, grew up in a really religious family. My mom, the only rock and roll I was allowed to listen to was Elvis because she loved Elvis. That's so cool. Yeah, so so to and me... And seriously, thank, it was Elvis. Like, it was Elvis. You were handed like the god of rock. Absolutely. Right. And, and like Scotty Moore, his guitar player, became one of my all-time favorite guitar players. And the way he played was just so not traditional rock. What it, do you, you know, hear when you hear him? Because like, you know, all of us would never know oh. what that difference is, you know? What yeah. did you hear in his guitar playing? Just melody and taste and, and feel, you know? And it was just like so cool. Oh, Emilio. Look at this, I got my pug socks on. Oh, cool. <laughs> Hi. Emilio just walked in. Hi, Emilio. Um, Hi. The star of the show. Uh, but yeah, and it was just his whole vibe and the feel and the way the songs made me feel, you know? It's something. You know, I was starving for anything outside of... What was your next of, guitarist? What was your next guitar that uh, you heard? Eddie. Eddie, you know, when I heard Eddie and the fire behind his guitar, you know, when I heard Eruption, I was just like... Oh, yeah, God, right? Fucking blew me away. See, in my mind, I know we all heard it and we thought, There's, this is just incredible. Yeah. You know, we all... I mean, I guarantee... Even today, people are home alone trying oh. to pretend they're him or yeah. or doing that. But I bet you heard something different than we heard. Yeah, you know what I what blew me away about Eddie, and actually when I sat down on a plane with Ed, I had a, a you know great talk with him. And you were sitting on a plane with Eddie Van yeah, Halen, he, uh, was, and you're discussing. You're yeah, like, it, well, it was weird because I was standing in line, and we had just opened up for Kiss uh, in a band. I was in. I started a band with Joe Lestay called Beautiful Creatures. And we were on Warner Brothers and we played for Kiss. It was one of our first shows out. And uh, and I remember standing in line. It was in Texas, I believe, Dallas. Um, somewhere, I can't even remember. I think Beautiful was Creatures was after Bullet Boys? Yeah. Uh, Is that right? Yeah, Beautiful Creatures was kind of a spawn from Bullet Boys. Okay. But, uh, I joined the Bullet Boys for like one tour. You know, their guitar play. I can't even remember the story, uh, but 
Um, I was good friends with Lonnie, the bass player, and their guitar player couldn't do it at the time for whatever reason. And, you know, and they gave me a really cool opportunity. I jumped in, played, had a great time. And on that tour, I met Joe Liste in Bang Tango. And after the tour, uh, I saw Joe pull up and I was like, I remember going, if he's here to ask me to join Bang Tango, he fucking can go fuck himself. <laughs> and, but he was, and he came up and he said, hey man, you want to start a band? And, and that is how Beautiful Creatures started, oh. you know? And we sat back and wrote a bunch of songs together, got a deal on Warner Brothers, and then... Did Life is Beautiful come off of that album? Out of, no, out of Beautiful Creatures, or Life, Life is Beautiful is a little later? Life is Beautiful uh, was was a 6 a.m. song later gotcha. on down the road. Gotcha, okay, cool. All There's right. been a lot of I'm weird... piecing it together, because your story, I don't think a lot of people understand. Exactly. You didn't just show up. You've been grinding, grinding. since detasseling corn, you yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. So I, I was standing in line, and uh, I heard this really familiar voice behind me going that's a nice guitar kid or something whatever he said and I turn around I I actually uh, at the time uh, Eddie left Ernie Ball the guitarist Ernie Ball and he had a signature guitar and at the time I was on Warner and Ernie Ball basically threw me on his old guitar but it, it was called an Axis and they took his name off it and stuff but it was fucking his guitar yeah. basically yeah, and I was lucky enough, they gave me my first endorsement, so I got all these free guitars, and they were, like, you know, is one of my heroes, so I was like, but he noticed the guitar, and he's like, that's a cool guitar, you know, and it was just You ironic. turn and look at Eddie Van Halen. And he's standing there, and he actually told, I was obviously... Starstruck, um, right? Broke musician, oh yeah, starstruck, but broke musician, sitting way in the back of the plane, he's sitting first class, never sat first class in my life. And he actually had his tour manager who was sitting next to him switch me seats. That's how cool this motherfucker Yo, was. Big yeah, big moment. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he never even knew. Th he didn't even know who I was. Wow. He was just just a cool fucking dude. And we sat on the plane and and uh, and I just you know the one thing I remember saying to Ed is I would, I go, you know the thing that blows me away and inspired me to get into the guitar was your playing. And he hears that all the time. But the one thing I said was it was your rhythm playing. Okay. It wasn't even, I, I was enamored by, of course, all this stuff. But his rhythms, if you listen to the rhythms, it's fucking unbelievable. And he, go, and he stops and he goes, do you know you might be the first person that's ever fucking told me that? Like, he goes, that's such a... He, 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 it was just neat that, because everybody praises that him That unique for, ear that you have the ability to hear with well, he... I, I mean, I think everybody, every guitar player knows that about Ed, obviously, but I don't think, you know, uh, you know people don't go to Ed and say... We don't know. Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. I mean, I'm listening like this is incredible because you're gifted, you know, that other side of the world that you're in. So you once shared a story with me with your GNR, your Guns N' Roses experience. Mm -hmm. You got called in for that audition, yeah, right? Yeah. Can you tell us about that? <clears throat> yeah, I was, I just came off the road with 6 a.m., uh, which was, uh, I think Life is Beautiful was number one on the radio at the time, and I got a call from Kitty McNeil, who used to manage me, and now she was uh, GNR's new manager. And uh, Katie said, hey, uh, on the download, would you want to come in and try out for GNR? They've been That's looking. Crazy. They've been looking for, I, I think, quite a while. They had been auditioning people, and they just hadn't found the right guy yet. And and I was like, yeah, you know. Were you I mean, losing it, or well, were you I at mean, a point in your I, career where you're like, I can handle this moment? No, I mean, I honestly, I never thought for a second. I would ever get the gig. I, I was just like, I just kind of wanted to go hang out with Axel. I was like, fuck yeah. Go, go down. <laughs> Fucking Axel Rose. Yeah, I mean, What's up, bud? We're, we're both from I'm Indiana. number 74. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, right. And uh, Sharon Osbourne, when I was recording Beautiful Creatures, he was working on the Chinese Democracy album in the studio next to us. So Sharon, because uh, our manager was Gloria Butler, who was... Geezer Butler's wife, who is in a band, obviously, with Ozzy. So the whole connection. So Sharon was always around. And Sharon walked to me. I, I was actually playing D out in the studio between takes. This classical piece that Randy Rhodes had written. Had no idea Sharon was even there. And I looked up and she, she was teary-eyed, standing in the doorway, listening. She goes, you got to play that for Ozzy. No yeah. way! 
And anyway, we <clears throat> we kind of connected and, and whatnot, and uh, she wa and and uh, she introduced me to Ozzy and everything. But she walked me around the corner and uh, introduced me to Axel, uh. and it was just. It was so cool, and he was just such a cool fucking dude. Man. Oh, cool! Really. So fast forward many years later, um, I beautiful creatures was no longer. You know, I was you know had six a.m. with Nikki Six and and James Michael, and we were doing great, and and uh, I got that call, and I went in, and and yeah, and I. I Found out later that uh, he called management and said if he even shows up, he has the gig. But I didn't know that at the time. So I went in thinking, fuck, where's Axel? And he wasn't there, of course. But I was like, uh, okay, cool. I, I played and went and never thought anything of it. And then I got the call and said, you got the gig. And When you're in 6 a.m. and gee, obviously two monsters, Nikki Six, and you guys are yeah. unbelievable. Like, how do you play that? Like, how do you go, you know, I mean, you know, as a comic for me, it's like, you want to go to Iowa or Idaho, you know, we don't, I don't know, you want to go to the Funny Bone or Giggles, you know, I'm always like, who's got the, who's paying for my flight? Uh, right, right. You know, do I, do I get a, a coupon to the buffet? How do you go, hey, Nikki, I'll be right back. Right. Or do you sneak off and, no, no, and no. wait to see if you find out or? No, no, everything, you know, everything is obviously very, very scheduled and, yeah. and to balance <clears throat> both bands for seven six seven years was it, it was a lot so, so you were rocking both, both worlds yeah. and and nikki it, it worked out because nikki had motley crew right of and, course and yeah. so when he wasn't on tour with motley crew and i wasn't on tour with gnr we'd come together and do 6 a.m so crazy and there's a lot of times where we would do 6 a.m regardless so if i was off a tour and he was on tour me and James would fly in and hang out with him on the Motley tour and oh, write cool. songs cool. or vice versa. Or I'd be on Skype. If I was on tour, we'd be on all on Skype writing songs over, you know, that was what was so, what is still, I mean, I'm still in 6 a.m., but what's so cool about 6 a.m., it's always been a labor of love. You know, we do it because we love, talent gets we together love the and... music and we're all good friends. And when we get together, there's a magic that just happens. That's there's, a... It's incredible. And it's something, you know, you just, you can't buy, you can't force. It just, you know, when bands come together, that's what I call the ingredients. The, each member is an ingredient to the stew. And as a songwriter, um, this is how, you know, I, ha I have the ability, as most songwriters and producers do, to write different genres of music according to the, the ingredient of that stew. So to... You know, when I was, you know, co-writing for Motley Crue, you got to understand, you know, the way Nicky plays bass or the way Tommy plays drums. And I'm just using Motley as an example. Yeah. You got to really understand the ingredients that... To write that for may, them yeah, the way that, they do what they exactly, do. Exactly. That gives it the Motley Crue sound. You know, where Vince's voice sounds <clears throat> the most powerful and, and vice versa. Or, you know, when I was... You know, working with Neil Diamond, things like that. It's That's a whole so cool. different. It's a whole different. It just thing just proves Neil Diamond's rock and roll. And you know what's weird is is we're only here this long. Yeah. You know, and I've oh, met. Maybe, can we just make yeah, that yeah, Jesus. But I've met people along the way. And when I first moved to LA, I met I met this guitar player, and I won't mention his name because I'm just not into throwing people under the bus. But he was with a semi-famous band at the time, '80s band. And I remember being at the Rainbow, and I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm not one to really walk up to people. I don't get really starstruck, but I wanted to go say hi because I dug his band. And, yeah. You know, and, and I remember the way he treated me like just a piece of shit. Like, I, he didn't have fucking time. Ooh. And I remember I walked out, and what that did to me as a fan, I was just like, fuck this motherfucker. And... I never bought another thing from him. I, I fucking never listened to another song since. And I remember what that did to me inside as a, as a person. And I, I remember thinking, I don't care if I'm ever lucky enough to make it in this world. I will never make anybody feel the way this guy made me feel. And, and I just, I, I think it happened probably for a reason. Else I'd be doing backflips off the, you know, off the, you know, back roof or whatever. And then I met... Eddie Van Halen 
one of the biggest fucking so you rock have stars. Both, both, yeah. Yeah, and Neil Diamond, one of the biggest rock stars, and Axl Rose. And I, I noticed the bigger they got, the more fucking cool and humble and down to earth they were. And, and I, I think it maybe it's just because they don't have anything left to prove or yeah. whatever it is. But I was like, I don't care if I ever get any sort of level of success, I want to be like them. Yeah. Because it made me feel good. And they took the time. And when they talked to me, they were present. And it makes you feel good. It's like, wow, they they don't look at themselves as, as these, you know. Right. They just... It's what we do. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I'm so grateful to have all this and, and all this pretty much came through music, you know. So to be able to come from a really small religious town, I remember, you know, laying on the hood of my beat up Cutlass Supreme staring at the stars with tears in my eyes because I just wanted it so bad. Yeah, And I right? was so focused and I remember <clears throat> looking up at the stars going, one day I want to look up at these stars and be in a whole different place in, in life. And, and, you know, when my song was on the radio, I remember I pulled off the road, laid on my car and looked at the stars and I was listening to my song on the radio. It was number one and I was like, fuck. That's you know, good yeah, stuff. So, Good stuff, bud. Yeah. You, he took me to Dreamland. I couldn't remember any questions. <laughs> was I was nice. like, this is so good. I don't know what... To... <laughs> and then I cried at the end of the night. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But, uh, but to reverse this too, again, man, thank you for doing what you do. You make, oh, you you make insane, the No, dude. you make you're the world crazy. laugh. And, and it's not easy to do what you do. Like, you get that heckler in the crowd. You get that... We get them. We get this, you know. We, Insane. We get the, fuck you, you're not Slash. I'm like, I never was trying to be right, Slash. You know? It's right. like, I'm just... I, I respect him so much. Right. I love the music he created with right. GNR. Did you face that no, when you jumped dude, into GNR dude. where some dude's like, fuck you, oh, dude? Yeah, I mean, I immediately went from having the coolest gig in the world, you know, to like, well, wait a Defending second. Defending yourself. Yeah, not even... I, there was not even... You know, it was one of those things where it's just like, you know, you try to do that gig justice and, and yeah. give it, you go out on stage and give your all every night. And you come back and I remember the band going, don't go the message boards, you know, because they've been in the band longer and they're like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. none and, of it matters. Yeah, don't read yeah, yeah, it. You're, you're and, just not going to sleep for a couple yeah, of Yeah, and I remember going the message boards. They're like, you homo fucking blah, blah, blah. And I was like whoa they're like they're like you're, you're smoking a cigarette that's because you're trying to be slight i was like no honestly i've been smoking since i was 14. right, like I, right. but it was just as weird you know you're wearing a hat it's like yeah i wore I a wear hat at 6 a.m we're in rock like, we were all inspired by similar people yeah, asshole yeah you know but, i just happened to be here yeah so and now <laughs> oh, I, look, I wish i could channel my comedian voice in you when you're up there <laughs> you're like fuck you yeah 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 that's why you're divorced dickhead <laughs> oh oh hey did you see my wife natalia Stick your head out. Oh, oh yeah. But, but, you know, and I look back now. I mean, there was times where, fuck, I just wanted to hang myself in my hotel oh, room. Oh, my God. But, but you know, you look back now. They're checking like, on you. Axel's like, you got to go check this no. room. The kid's over there. Check on his room. <laughs> I heard he was online. No, but you know what's cool about it is, like, you know, I look back now, and I'm so thankful and grateful to have these memories. And I, I gained a lot of fans. Don't get me wrong. And, and, and. For that, I'm grateful. You know, I, I have memories that nobody can take from me and money can't buy, you know? You should and, start a cult because I'm ready to sign up. <laughs> Welcome. And, All of my goodness can be spread <laughs> through the world. Music has blessed me. Join. 1995. Yeah, exactly. Donate. But, <laughs> leave donate, your families. Donate. <laughs> I leave. The whole lawns are covered with people. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's been... I've had one of the most magical... Career, Where I'm are you so right blessed. now? Because you told me when we walked in, you're in the process of creation. Yeah. And are you allowed to just talk about, because I love what you, you know, that's what, when I walked in and I heard what you were working on, my mind went, well, is he mixing those? Like, I, and I thought, yeah. I don't want to say that because what yeah. if he's not? <laughs> and I don't really, you know, I'm, I'm a, I don't know your world. Yeah. Like, but I was like, God, that would be. Because I just pictured myself. Well, it's really weird because when you walked in, you're like, are you doing like an EDM rock thing? I go, it's exactly what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, and it was uh, appealing to me right away because seeing someone like you at one of those events playing guitar, yeah. the only attempt at that was uh, Mad Max Fury Road with the guy tied to the front <laughs> of the truck, <laughs> right? So, you know, if people's like, what inspired you? Be like, that dude on the truck. Right, no, right, right. But that would be mind-blowing to be... 
on a you know with two thousand people yeah. and I, I'm telling you it's corny. I have goosebumps again. Yeah. You jam guitar. Yeah. You know someone my, else. My whole thing was you know I'm a songwriter. I'm a producer. So I I'm not. I mean I I come from the rock world I guess, but I grew up on classical music. I love all kinds of genres of music. You know from from pop to rock to EDM, and I, I love, you know, dubstep, I love. Well, you just shared those lyrics with me, which I won't get into, yeah. but, you know, as I said, you think you know, so, I, and obviously, I don't know you like that, but, I mean, those lyrics, I mean, as an artist, as like someone who, I, you know, music is everything to comedians, Yeah, I'm like, I was like, like I've always been knowing you're sickly talented, yeah. but then you just showed me like, oh, by the way, I could do this. Yeah, and I was like, they weren't. That was incredible. And then yeah. hearing you like sing it, yeah, that's crazy that you have all those gifts. It's yeah. kind of fucking wrong that you have them all. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't have them. There was all, another kid I mean. in Iowa that wanted to write some shit. <laughs> Or Iowa, I made you Iowa. <laughs> Indiana. Listen, I'm from New Jersey. It's all the same. You yeah, said it corn. Is, it is. It you is. You know, it's there's always same. a musical going Trust on. Trust me, it's Stay all. Stay out the of the pool hall. It's but funny. dude, it's ridiculous. What's what's so, it called? The, the so mesh. It's called Pyromantic. Is is the project name? And originally, uh, it started out of uh, me and James get together as songwriters from 6 a.m. and we just started writing music. We had some time off of 6 a.m. And we just did what we do. Uh, we started writing this music, uh, and it was fun because we were like, let's really just push ourselves creatively outside the box and let's come up with something that doesn't sound like 6 a.m. And uh, we started creating this sound, and uh, as time went on, James got busy doing his podcast, and I uh, took the whole project on myself, so I, you know, and I kept honing this sound for the last. This sound has taken about two years total okay. and uh, to create and the whole thing was I wanted to create a sound where it was like a worldly sound where I, I was cross pollinating uh, different genres of music like like bringing them um, you know EDM rock pop all these different genres that I've always loved how do I bring it all into one project and and make it not sound like fucked, you know, where it really sounds natural. That sound that I heard, and this is just coming from, you know, non-musician, that is worldwide. I told you right away, I, I could see my girl and I in Greece listening yeah, to this yeah. with a thousand people under the stars. Yeah. Where we are right now, you know, the land of giants, Las yeah. Vegas, yeah. I could see that being, I mean, my, I always wonder why that's once a year, that energy. But what you have done is, t it really feels like you took it out of this little, this cookie cut well, and then blended the only, all the shades. The only way to describe it is I've been calling it EDM rock because I don't, that, that's what, EDM that's rock. basically, that's the only way I can describe. EDM rock, you heard it here <laughs> um, in the land of giants. So originally James was going to sing all the songs and stuff. And, and then when James pulled out, I sat back and I was like, okay, how do I still salvage what I'm loving so much about what we've created so far and how do I take it and and get it to where I really want it to mm -hmm. be and so I came up with okay what I'm gonna do since I'm crossing these genres I'm gonna focus it more on the EDM world I'm gonna bring in big rock guitars with that EDM sound but I want congas I want horns I want I want it worldly I want right. it, I want it to have a, this Latin feel so what because, it sounds like and and it I just want it to be the and so what I'm doing with it uh, is I'm going to play guitar with a DJ playing the music that I produce and I write and we're going to uh, basically feature different singers from different genres of music so Unreal. it's just a fun being a songwriter and a producer it just opens my palette like this. Now I no longer have to write for one voice, you know what I mean, yeah. or one ingredient. Right. Now I have every ingredient to play with for my stew. And so it's just like, it's for me, it's the ultimate project. You left the piano, you're looking for another instrument, now you're combining all your instruments. And, 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 and also, how do I make guitar sound interesting and unique? Mm. Uh, you know, so that's, that's half of the fun too, is just... And it's this, it's this really unique ingredient 
you know, the, all these ingredients create the sound of pyromantic, but it took two years to figure out the right ingredient for right. it. So. Well, I feel really lucky that we walked in on that and that we're here today with you. Thank you yeah, for doing thank you. our first episode. Of we rocked the, the first of one, Land of Giants. Mr. DJ Ashba, Ashba Clothing. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your website uh, uh, or Instagram is? Yeah, djashba.com. And uh, yeah, you can go there, but go to pyromanic.com. We'll be launching very shortly. We're going to be launching music this year. And uh, yeah, going to be hitting the road here soon. So Excited. It's like a no-brainer, everything I've heard. And just, you're such a humble, great guy. I wish you and Natalia nothing but like happiness and Thank success. You. And, and thanks so much for Thank having us, brother. brother. Cheers, man. Love, Love this you, buddy. Cheers. Hey, thanks everyone who's added our YouTube channel, The Land of Giants TV or Butch Bradley Comedy. Please follow, like and follow. We need that. Like and follow. Tell your friends about us. Share us, share us. The more you do that, the more we grow, the more good stuff I get to show you. Just look in here. You can't even see what's in there. See, I can't show you unless more people are following us. But there's, oh, so much goodness in here. I'll put it back here. We'll see if you like and follow.